When I was 15 years old, my parents decided to go visit my uncle. I didn't want to go. I wanted to stay home and hang out with my best friend Alex, since we lived in a quiet neighborhood and there was little crime happening there. My parents allowed me to stay home and have Alex over. My mom left a note on the fridge with all emergency numbers, and my dad told me to call him if anything happens. I assured them that everything's going to be fine. Me and Alex were just going to play video games and have some pizza later. I called Alex, and he came to my house 15 minutes later. We played UFC on my PS4 for two hours, and then had some pizza. After our meal, we just sat in the living room talking about random stuff. Eventually, we started talking about girls. Alex mentioned a website where you could talk to random people called Omegle. He also said that he talked to some girls on there, so we decided to go on Omegle and try our luck. For the first 30 minutes, we didn't get matched with any girls, and we were starting to get bored. And just when I was moving my mouse to close out of the webpage, two girls showed up on our screen. They were about our age, maybe a little older. We started talking to them, but they were just typing. We could see that they were trying to talk, but we couldn't hear them. We told them to turn on their microphone, but the girl said that they don't have a microphone. We continued talking to them. We said that we were home alone, and so were they. They said that they lived in the same city as us, and the same area as Alex and I, but we've never seen these girls before. I thought this was odd, because our city's pretty small. After 15 more minutes, they said that we were cute, and that we should hang out sometime. We were stunned. Girls usually don't want to hang out with us, so Alex gave them a Snapchat username. As soon as he typed his username, the girls disconnected. We were really bummed out, we didn't even get their names. So we just turned off my laptop and went back to PS4 to play some video games. Some time passed, we were still playing video games when Alex took out his phone. He had just received a snap from someone called AnnaXOXO99. He opened it and it was a picture of the two girls we met on Omegle earlier. They were walking on a street and the caption said, Can we come over and hang out? Alex immediately looked at me. He didn't ask me anything, I already knew what he wanted and I said no. He wasn't happy about this, but he understood at the same time. Alex texted them saying that he can't come over and that they should hang out some other time. A couple of minutes later, the girls responded, Can we meet at the park then? So Alex asked me if I wanted to go to the park with them. It was only 10 minutes of walking from my house, but I still said no. At this point, Alex was a little frustrated and he said he was going with or without me. Maybe he was right, maybe I should go. Am I really going to pass up on an opportunity like this? I looked at my watch, and it was 10.30pm, so it wasn't that late, and my dad's friend lived right next to the park, so I said I'd go with him, but if anything seemed strange, we would immediately go back to my place. Alex agreed. He sent the girls a snap, saying that we were on our way to the park. They replied that they were waiting for us at the children's playground. We got out of my house and started walking to the park. The whole walk there, I was thinking, what if something goes wrong? We don't even know those girls, and what if someone else was at the park with them? I didn't want to say anything, because Alex probably would just say I'm paranoid. So I kept my thoughts to myself. After 10 minutes of walking, we got to the park. The children's playground was a little deep into the park, so I asked Alex to ask them to come to the main entrance of the park because we were already there. Alex just said, dude, come on and texted them that we were at the park. After a minute or so that we arrived at the playground, there was no one there. I asked Alex if they responded to our last snap, and he said no, they had just opened it. We waited there for a couple of minutes, but there was no sign of the girls. We were all alone in that park. I told Alex that they were probably just messing with us and that we should just go home, but Alex wanted to stay a couple of minutes more. A minute passed, and that's when we heard someone walking behind us. We turned around, and there was a guy dressed in black. Standing behind a tree, looking at us. He had a creepy smile on his face. I said to Alex that we should go home, and that this wasn't a good idea. Alex agreed, and we started walking back home. The whole time, I was looking over my shoulder, trying to see if the man was following us. And he was. I told Alex, and we instantly started running. Just when we got to the park's entrance, the guy grabbed my hand and started screaming in some insane way. I was screaming and kicking, trying to get him to let go of my hand. I was calling Alex to help me, but he ran away. The guy started pulling me back into the park. 
I was screaming as loud as I could, and that's when I saw blue and red lights. The guy must have seen them too, because he immediately let go of my hand and ran deeper into the park. I started running back to the direction of my house when a police officer stopped me. I explained everything to him, and he called my parents. The police officer took me to the police station to wait for my parents to pick me up. My parents came after about an hour, and the police officer told them what happened, and so did I. My dad asked if they caught the guy, and they said they were still looking for him. When we got home, my parents were glad nothing serious happened, but they still were mad at me because I left the house to meet some girls I was talking to online. They told me to go to sleep and that everything will be alright. The next day, Alex came to my house. He was with his dad, and he apologized for running away last night. He also said that when he got home, he opened his Snapchat, and there was no sign of Anna XOXO99. It was like she never existed. For some context, I'm a teenage male, and this happened when I was around 17 years old. Back then, I used to see all these videos on YouTube about omegle horror stories and pranks. Now, I'm not particularly brave or anything, but if I'm bored, I often find myself going to drastic measures to find something to do. After thinking for a while, I built up the courage to go on Omegle. I wanted to be funny, so I didn't respond to anything or anyone. I then came across this guy that kept saying for me to talk or else, and being a teenager, I wanted to make him mad, so I asked what he'd do in the chat. All he said was, you should talk more, and then left. I feel pretty proud of myself for being a jerk, but slightly disturbed, so I turned Omegle off to work on some homework due the next day. After a few minutes of doing homework, I heard my dogs barking, and they wouldn't stop even when I told them to. I figured maybe somebody made a loud noise, or even had a dog whistle. After calming down my dogs and getting back to my homework, I heard the noise this time. Somebody had knocked at my back door. My back door is gated with a four foot fence and a lock. The only way somebody could get in is if they had a key or jumped it. After looking outside for about 10 minutes, I called my dad and told him everything. He told me that when he gets home, he'll look around. I accepted that because he's a doctor and he's got a lot of work to do. Half an hour passes, my dogs are outside and that's when I hear a thump outside my door. I looked around and there was a rock with a note stuck to it. After that, I heard my dogs barking at our driveway. The note read, I know where you live. I've never been this scared in my life. I just feel lucky to have three dogs in my house at all times. Now. I'm not the kind to show emotion or get scared easily, but that freaked me out. I'm shaking and on the nerve of calling the police. Was this just one big coincidence, or did the same guy from Omegle really somehow figure out where I live? When my friends and I were 15 years old, we went on Omegle a lot. I'm sure most of you already know what Omegle is, but if not... It's a chat website that pairs you with a random person for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You can disconnect and start a new chat with someone else at any time. At the time, the website was still in its prime and hosted around 150,000 people online at all times. We liked to mess with people and would completely make up who we were. We were young and had a bad sense of humor. Well, one day, we decided to go on Omegle and say some very off-the-wall stuff. On that day, we decided to tell strangers that we had kids locked in our basement. For whatever reason, it was comedy gold in our 15 year old minds, and we thought the reactions would be hilarious. We maybe told one or two strangers this, and they just disconnected. But then, we connected to a stranger who was either genuinely worried, or wanted to play along with the creepy message. We told the stranger our joke for the day. The stranger asked why we would be so despicable and that he would call the cops. We laughed it off and disconnected. We connected to the next stranger, and the first message that popped up was almost unbelievable. How are those kids in your basement? We were shocked and disconnected immediately. We tried to laugh it off for a few seconds and connect to another stranger. While we were connected to another stranger, another message popped up in the chat. I'm still waiting to hear about those kids. We decided to disconnect and reconnect one more time. The last message this person sent was, 
I'm still here, and I'm still waiting for your answer. Finally, we came to our senses and got off the computer for a while. I remember being so worried that whoever that was called the cops on us. Luckily, nothing ever came of it. After that, we stopped going on Omegle as much. I still wonder if a moderator was on the site and had a way to keep connecting to us, or if it was someone who was good at hacking. I'm sure what we told that person freaked them out as much as they freaked us out. Overall, we learned a good lesson and realized that we weren't as funny as we thought. Some of you may have heard of this website called Omegle.com. If you haven't, it's a chat website people go to when they're bored and it's anonymous. It's up to you to give out any of your information, but you can easily get out of a conversation and move on to talk to a new person with a click. Around 2012, I went on this website a lot as I got lonely and I've had some nice conversations on there before. I was 16 at the time. This is where I met Emily. She was this funny girl who was so easy to talk to, and right away I felt like we had been friends forever, so I gave her my Skype and all my details so that we could talk again. Pretty soon, we were talking all day, every day, for a few months over Omegle. She said she was from Wales, which I thought was so cool. I've never met anyone from Wales. I thought she was the best friend I ever had. We talked about everything going on in our lives. She would tell me crazy stories about the things she'd done with her friends, and we'd talk about relatable girl stuff, and I would wake up to photoshop pictures of us and cats and some bad pun written on it about us being best friends forever, or something stupid like that. We texted all the time, but I wanted to actually call her or video, but she told me she had gotten into an argument with her stepdad recently, and he threw her laptop at the wall and it broke the camera. Right. Well, I thought maybe she can text on Skype and I'll be on video and voice just so she can see me. Why not, right? When we did, she wouldn't stop going on about how jealous she was of me and told me to stop being so beautiful and it flattered me. I thought she was gorgeous in her pictures and it was silly of her to be jealous of me at all. Emily was kind of a clingy kind of girl as she wanted my attention all the time and would get upset if I fell asleep or didn't respond fast enough. She also started making strange comments about her body, like saying how she thinks she has an ugly vagina and is worried about it and called it a coin slot, and she'd asked if I'd look at it and tell her if it's weird, for which I would just tell her I'm sure it's fine, don't worry about it. She said, I bet yours has sparkles and magic. I could feel she was trying to get a picture of me. I didn't do it, I changed the subject. Emily would talk about the guy that works at her market and how she had a big crush on him but was too awkward to say anything. I encouraged her through that time to talk to him and eventually she got the nerve and asked him out. The night she told me this, I remember her asking this question out of the blue. If I was a guy, what name do you think I'd have? Suddenly I had this sinking feeling inside reading this as I realized I never heard her voice or saw her in a video. She could actually be a guy this whole time. Could she though? Nah, she's just trying to scare me. She tries to get reactions all the time and her photos add up to everything she talks about. I've got nothing to worry about, right? I decided to join in. John? Oh, I was hoping you would say Jacob. Hmm, that's weird. But once again, I thought she was just being her weird self, and we moved on to talking about other things. I did tell her she almost scared me though, and she laughed and apologized. One night comes along, and we're talking as normal. She asked me what state I lived in. I told her because I thought maybe she wanted to see what it looked like compared to where she lives on Google or something. Then she goes, you're only 500 miles from me. I say, no you're not. She says, yes, I go to I look up this school and sure enough, it's in Alabama. But you can easily just look for a school on Google Maps. So I thought she was just making stuff up to get more reactions. She says that she fixed her camera and we can do video chat tonight if I wanted to. 
I said yes. I was excited. We had talked for two months and I finally get to see her instead of pictures and texts. I get all set up in the living room and call her. She answered. You know when you feel frozen with fear and time feels slow? That first second when I saw him, I thought maybe that's her brother or friend and she's going to move the camera to her. Nope, it's just him. While I'm frozen and speechless, he picks up one of his laptops and signs in as Emily to show me that he's been doing this the whole time. He doesn't say anything. He then pulls out a camera and points it towards me. I finally told myself to end the call before he takes a picture. Why did he take his camera out? I don't know, but I try to process everything while my heart is pounding, and even though he may not be near me physically, it was still very creepy and disturbing to me. I pulled myself together and decided to try and get some answers. I wrote him a simple, why? And he says, I was dared to by my friends to pretend I was a girl on Omegle, but I thought you were really cool so I kept it up. I stopped talking to the other guys though, I just wanted to keep talking to you. Guess what his name was? Jacob. He was 21 and he's from Alabama. I couldn't understand how he kept up with his fake life of Emily every day and even had pictures to make it all seem so legitimate. It was almost like Emily was real and died that night. This girl in these pictures, who were they? The strange thing is, sometimes I feel like she's still out there, but I know she doesn't exist. I'm a very young female in the sixth grade. I was naive and stupid. I kind of still am, so please don't leave me a lecture about internet safety. Truth is, I know it all already, but I chose to do this. I'm aware it was a dumb decision, and this will never ever happen again. Okay, so let's begin. I was bored over this past winter vacation, and was on the tablet I got for Christmas along with a Bluetooth keyboard. But I didn't want to go to sleep. I remember recalling watching many prank videos on YouTube on this site called Omegle. If you don't know what Omegle is, it's a free website with a safe PG version for 13 plus year olds and another inappropriate version for inappropriate purposes. For some pedophilic reason, guys still prefer to go on the safe version to show girls their anaconda. This site keeps you anonymous for safety purposes and doesn't recommend you give out personal information. Being stupid, stupid me, I figured, hey, might as well talk to strangers at midnight, what could go wrong? The answer to that question is a lot. I learned that the hard way. This was the second time in a row I've used a meagle. On January 2nd, late at night or early in the morning, I went on and in my interest box I entered 5 sauce. It was quite a few chat logs in when I saw a girl who said she was 13. I already knew this person was a simulator. I should have left, but I didn't. Basically, this girl was asking personal information. I faked it all except for my age, shamefully. She said, cool, I'm 13, I'm only a year older than you. She kept urging me to show her my naked body, as she did too. Of course, I refused, and of course, this creepy pedophile got mad. Apparently, this person had been recording me the whole time on his computer. He played it on his screen, leaving me to watch myself drinking out of my water bottle, an image that can easily be photoshopped into something really inappropriate. I remember watching it and telling him that he was sick, to which he simply responded no. Being the smartest person in the world, I didn't leave the freaking chat. Instead, I got my phone, continued making talk with him, and recorded him threatening me. He told me that if I didn't show myself indecently, he'd take the recordings and edit it in an inappropriate video. When I said no, he told me I had two choices. One, to show myself nude, or two, to relieve his bathroom fetish. Because I didn't respond, he thought I didn't know what it was, and so he told me. I didn't respond once again. So he left, leaving me with the message, I guess you made your choice then, bye. At first, I thought absolutely nothing of it, telling myself, he's not smart enough to do that. 
But the more I thought about it, the more I freaked out. I cried silently as I didn't want my dad and his friend to hear me next door in his room. I posted the videos on my private Instagram that I wasn't allowed to have, my only followers being people from my school that I knew. I asked for help. Luckily, only a small amount of people were online, like two, so I spared myself some embarrassment at school, as only one person from there saw it. The other was my 13-year-old stepsister. Val, the girl who saw it, took a screenshot of it and messaged me, asking what was wrong. I told her, and she said I should call the police. Hesitantly, unfortunately, I had to call the police. The dispatcher was very nice, but when the police came, the lady that was there was not. She lectured me, and then she left. She said she was unable to make an arrest as I was allowing him to do this to me, like I wanted it or something. Of course, I showed them the videos. My dad said he was disappointed, and long story short, I was grounded from everything. I barely just got my tablet on Easter after 83 days. My phone and broken iPod are still taken away. I hate Omegle. Number 1 A year or two ago, I was one of those guys that went on Omegle looking for sex. So yeah, I was a bit of a creeper. I used to chat and then talk on emails and kick, normally ending in sexting or something like that. I made sure that they were always under 16, as I was 15 at the time. 16 is legal where I am, and I avoided getting others in trouble. One day, I found someone on kick, and we kicked it off, pardon the pun, and we chatted a lot. I found out she was from where I lived, and I was overjoyed at this point. At that time, she told me she was 22, or around that age. Now, I think I may have been the biggest retard possible, and I said I was 16. We talked about meeting for a while, and one day she talked about sex. Now, I never used to send anything except shirtless, which to be honest isn't impressive at all, for obvious reasons. This time, I did decide to send more private pics. I got pics back and it looked pretty genuine, so we kept going on. We chatted more, and one day she dropped a bombshell. She said she was actually in a relationship, but they were looking at a threesome. Now, as a horny teenager, I took whatever I could get and said okay. It was at this point that she apparently showed and shared the emails with her boyfriend. I got lots of chats about what was going to happen and stuff, and I was pretty excited to be honest. At this point is where both of them both asked if I had ever thought or done buy stuff. I was creeped out a little but simply said no to both and told them I was straight. To start with, they said okay, but they kept coming back and asking if I was sure. At this point, I thought I would feel very unsafe and uncomfortable to meet them or even chat, and so I told them that. Now this is where it gets creepy. I was told to stop, and I got spammed with emails giving me a lot of sexual and normal abuse. I ignored all the emails. I got scared, but thought nothing of it. It was one day when I got texts and missed calls of the same kind of abuse that I got creeped out. I had never given my number to them, nor had I told anyone about what was going on. So it was them. But how? I got texts saying that they were going to send my photo to my parents, post it to all my friends if I didn't do what they asked. I was petrified. I was going to phone the police, but I thought I could get in a lot of trouble for that. I asked what they wanted. Then I found out that it was most definitely a single guy this whole time. He said if I didn't perform gay sex on him, then he would do what he threatened. At this point I said, I'm underage, I'll have you arrested for child pornography. He didn't believe me. I also mentioned it was blackmail. He then threatened to hurt me, to which I replied, you don't know where I live. He then told me a road which I lived on. I claimed he was wrong, but he wasn't persuaded. I ignored everything for a good month. I purposefully took long routes home from school and never went out by myself, ever. I locked everything in my house when I was by myself. I deleted my email, chopped up my SIM card, 
and made sure I never had long hair again so he wouldn't recognize me. I lived in fear for around half a year before I got over it. I only told a handful of close friends for safety. It just shows you you can't trust anyone online. And it's not wise to be on there for the purpose I was on there for, especially when you're underage. No one really understands just how dangerous social media can be. It really is such a different world where anyone can be whoever they want. I was 16 years old at the time that this story happened. I was always on MySpace, you know, typical teenager stuff. I'd get a few messages here and there. There was this one kid though who would constantly send me messages. I would reply sometimes, typical hello, what's up, that kind of thing. I thought nothing of it. One day me and my friend, let's call her Hannah, was walking around the city, per usual. We had stopped in this complex building that was near my house just to take a break. We were sitting on the stairs when some guy came up behind us and said to Hannah, Hey, do you have a lighter? She says no, and he walks away. Then about 15 minutes later, he comes back and then just stood behind me. I start to see in my peripheral vision a hand movement. So I turned a little more around, and I saw his hand and his pants moving up and down while facing me. My heart instantly went into my stomach. I started writing on my phone in a text to Hannah, and I said that I think he's touching himself. We both felt stuck. He then sat down next to Hannah, and he was so close he was actually touching her arm. I pretended to be on the phone so that maybe he would leave. He looks at Hannah, then goes, Is her name Nadia? Hannah was instantly scared and she then blurted out, Ask her yourself. But I was still pretending to be on the phone. About five minutes later, the security guard had walked around and had then said hello to us, then talked to the kid. Let's call him Antonio. Hey, what's up Antonio? You hanging with these ladies tonight? I knew that help had to be written all over my face. Why can't he see it? The security guard then says, well, if I hear of two white girls that go missing, I guess I know who to call. At this point, I'm starting to feel more sick than I already did. The security guard then left, and yet Hannah and I are still sitting there feeling more stuck than ever. A few minutes later after this, one of his friends comes along and then says, Wanna come inside? I finally have enough energy to say no, and that I have to go meet up with my cousin. As we start to stand up, Antonio's friend stands up in front of me and then says, Come on, just for a little bit. I said no, and then me and Hannah started walking towards the exit, as my house is right up the hill. And what do you know? They both start following us. We get inside this tunnel, and Hannah says to take off your shoes so that we can run, and that we don't want them hearing where we go. So there we are barefoot, now running like our lives depended on it. We get onto my street, run onto my house, go into the back hallway, it was actually so quiet, all I could hear was myself trying to catch my breath and my heart just beating in my ears. I started looking at Hannah scared, just hiding behind a wall staring at the glass door, waiting to see if someone would pop up. We did eventually calm each other down. I thought everything was over until the next morning when I logged into MySpace, I had a message from him that then said, I just want you to know I know what house you live in. With my street name listed, I then blocked him on MySpace, and I never walked past that complex ever again. A few weeks later, I actually found out that he was in jail, and from what I know now at 25 years old, he's still in jail. I can only imagine what he did, but I just really hope to never run into him. Well, again that is. <laughs> <laughs> 